English shorthand dictation exercise number 44 dictation speed is 150 words per minute ready start honorable chairman sir i stand here today to deliberate on the general budget 2020-21 which is the first budget of the third decade of 21st century keeping that in view the finance minister presented this budget amid high expectations of a demand stimulus for the economy the slow down in the economy combined with the existing fiscal stress made this a challenging task economists have said realistically that there was little scope for a big fiscal stimulus she has tried to do her best under the given circumstances one may ask why she did not try to do more on policy and legislative changes that are not necessarily related to tax revenue and expenditure but these can be done later as they are not part of the money bill before i delve into the nuances of this year's budget i would like to know from the government whether any consensus has emerged on defining poverty line in the country the governing council of niti ayog had held a meeting on 8th february 2015 under the chairmanship of honorable prime minister a task force of the niti ayog submitted a report on poverty elimination to the prime minister in july 2016 The terms of reference for the task force included the development of a working definition of poverty regarding estimation of poverty the report states that a consensus in favor of either the tendulkar committee or a higher poverty line did not emerge the task force recommended to form an expert committee to arrive at an informed decision on the level at which the poverty line should be set We are told on 5th February this year that it is still under consideration in reply to a question which was put up to the government but it has not been decided since 2016 the economic survey 2019-20 has very candidly and even arguably pushed forward pro market reforms it has delved into india's own past it has argued that india's civilizational ethos has celebrated wealth creators that is why it had allowed the country to be the dominant economic power globally for more than 3/4 of known economic history the survey states that our four decade long dalliance with socialism was an aberration from this norm i may agree i may not agree many may agree many may not agree but what the economic survey has stated this year very candidly is that the four decade long dalliance with socialism was an aberration from this norm this is a nation which worships goddess lakshmi the earning is not supposed to be appropriated fully but to be divided in four one quarter is to be kept as savings one quarter is to be spent on early money one quarter is to be spent for the society and the last quarter for his own expenses many of us today even practice this in our daily life that is the reason why india's resilience was on the savings talking about the budget one may say there is focus on agriculture on infrastructure a boost to the corporate sector tax cuts and disinvestment which are positive steps slowing economy falling aggregate demand poor credit flows and exports were all pointing to the need for a sharp fiscal stimulus but fiscal space was limited yet several measures and initiatives have been taken to address these challenges and build them around the themes of aspirational india economic development and caring society review of rules of origin norms under the free trade agreements and provisions against dumping are welcome steps this budget indicates that the government is alive to a new set of environmental challenges confronting us sir what is the state of economy today that is read through key economic indicators like gdp inflation industrial production balance of payments and fiscal deficit people say there is a slow down some say it is structural and to correct it we need structural reforms some others say it is cyclical 
cyclical for which one needs policy intervention since 2011-12 investment has been declining i would like to mention this because there was a question during the question hour and the honorable minister of state for finance has given a written reply the outcome in this country has not been lowered and has not come down since 1991 no doubt we are measuring gdp growth but outcome has not come down as it had in the 60s and 70s three times there was a serious slump in outcome however after 1991 the outcome has never come down in this country and that is the reason for the resilience of this country to withstand different international slowdowns or depressions that are occurring in other parts of the world Here I would like to mention that the problem today in our country is that it is not the outcome or the GDP but it is the investment which is coming down at a rapid pace we have always made our comparison with the east asian tigers how have they improved themselves how have they built up their economy their investment was on manufacturing and was on production our growth has to depend on investment and that is the reason why there is always a comparison between us and china so the more investment is there in our country the faster and quicker would be the growth as investment has slowed down i would like to mention from where the investment has to come in india the investment was being done by the respective public sector banks and the public sector banks are unable to disinvest in a greater way after 2011 because majority of the investment went towards infrastructure these are all on record from 2000 the investment which was for msme and for the small traders had come down and is still sliding down i would expect that in this budget adequate corrective measures are necessary so that the resilience is brought in through the banking so that they can invest more in the msme sector and on the small traders so that they, they can actually bring the output growth since 2011-12 investment has been declining in india investment has been the main driver of growth whereas in east asia it is the exports which are the engine of growth but it is not happening after 2000 in the last part of the first decade of this century banks are investing in infrastructure projects today banks are no longer in a position to lend in infrastructure and they are not providing credit to small business also this has led to the problem has this budget addressed this issue i believe there is a need for financial sector reforms there is a huge amount of npas willful defaulters are to be tackled sternly unless the msmes are revived it will be tough to reverse the current economic slowdown and ensure growth in employment there is a need to focus on banking sector to tackle the slowdown unless the banking sector is brought back to health one cannot expect a reversal of the economic slowdown this year the big borrowers are still able to borrow but the msmes are being squeezed of loans for not being viable in the eyes of bankers an interesting piece is there in the economic survey in a strong critique of the performance of public sector banks the economic survey says that while rupees 4.3 lakh crore of tax payers money has gone into the public sector banks every rupee invested has lost 23 paise as on 2019 yet i would say the government should not lose sight of wider reforms in the public sector banks bankers today have been reluctant to take lending decisions in the absence of reforms the public sector banks will remain vulnerable to frauds and fear of investigation despite safeguards put in place by the government there is a need for wide reforms to build capacity in evaluating risk associated with lending there is a need to get competition within the banking sector is there any competition today there is none an attempt was made to bring in frdi bill during the last lok sabha i think i read it yesterday in the newspaper where the finance minister has said that they are considering to bring in the frdi bill i would say there is a talk of it now 
No doubt there was some concern, but we cannot throw the baby with the bathwater. The budget estimates of the next fiscal year to a large extent depend on achieving the ambitious disinvestment target. You intend to raise a massive amount of Rs 2.1 trillion next year, compared with the revised estimate of Rs 65,000 crore this year. The government had budgeted Rs 1.05 trillion in July 2019. However, Rs 18,000 crore only has been managed to be raised. The government is planning to raise Rs 90,000 crore by selling its stake in the financial institutions like the Life Insurance Corporation. People say there are reasons why this proposal is a good one.